Hey everybody, Keith here. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the issues I ran into diagnosing and figuring out an oxygen sensor. Uh, case in point here is on an Acura CL, a 1997, and uh, I've got some notes here to kind of help me out, just so I cover everything. Uh, this is not a uh, this is not a demonstration video as far as uh, you know exactly what I went through and putting it in and and everything, but. Um, I'm going to discuss some of the kind of finer points and diagnostics things that trip me up in actually finding the problem that may be tripping you up. So um, this is you know Honda product, so um, my situation was on the 97 Acura CL, but uh, I understand this problem is also common on TLs and um, also possibly other Hondas as well. So anyway, um, this is the replacement O2 sensor here. This is original equipment, and um, basically the reason that I'm doing this video is um, the difficulty that I had in actually figuring out that it was the O2 sensor. And the reason is, is the car computer was not giving into any, any indication of a O2 code or anything like that, which it often will do. But instead I was getting all kinds of other bizarre situations. I was getting... Uh, the running lean codes, which would be the PO170 and the PO171. And then I was even getting evaporator leak codes that I had a evaporator leak in the canister uh, somewhere in that whole circuit, which could be, you know, a million different things, vacuum lines and other things that are hooked up, gas tank. And this went on for months and the car ran poorly. Um, it sometimes ran great and then other times it just ran so bad I couldn't even get it to go which is also not normally an O2 sensor thing. Normally with an oxygen sensor, the car still runs pretty good. Um, but it was really sluggish, like around 2,000 RPMs. And um, what I didn't notice at first, well, there was, a, there was a bad smell. I figured it was running rich. But um, what was really alarming is when I finally checked the gas mileage, that my gas mileage had dropped like 50 to 60% uh, less than what it should be. And the reason I didn't notice it is I just wasn't doing a lot of driving um, with this car because it was a second car. But um, again, the purpose of this video is I, I'm pointing out some things that maybe aren't quite so obvious uh, because the computer just in the diagnostics just weren't coming up as O2 sensor. It was coming up as other things. So, but in the end, it did uh, it did end up being the O2 sensor. So, um, the I went with the the uh, original equipment which is Denso, and the reason I did that is because I have heard that there are problems with Bosch and some of the other aftermarket ones. So um, most places this part was more, but I had found a place, actually Napa Auto, out west on the west coast here, where um, the Denso was uh, just as good price-wise as, as the Bosch. So I had read in some forums that the Bosch has caused problems in certain Hondas and Acuras, and uh, I heard it more than one place, so I just didn't want to take that chance. Uh, another thing here was the actual uh, device that helps you get the O2 sensor out, and this is a socket. Here's a picture of it on the back. And basically, this is sitting inside your uh, manifold pipes underneath the car. Um, in my case, it ended up being the front sensor. This car has two sensors, one in the front, upstream, and one in the back. And the way I was able to figure that out is my code reader told me that it was bank one, sensor one, and that is the one that's closest to the engine. So I knew that that's where the, the uh, faults were coming from. So this goes into the exhaust pipe like this. So this, uh, this hex nut here socket fits over it like this. And then there's a, there's a hole in it for the cord because um, otherwise you wouldn't be able to fit a normal socket around it. And then over here is, I don't know if you can see this or not, there is a spot for a, a half inch ratchet or breaker bar. So you can put that on while the uh, cord is in the way. So um, interestingly, it turns out that I didn't even need that, but I'm going to keep it anyway in case this happens again or on another car. What I did was I, I just, while this is sitting in the car, I sprayed some WD-40 on the, the bottom here so it would sink into the threads. And in 10 minutes, um, it, all I had to do was just put a regular 7 8 open ended wrench on it, and boom, um, it just came right loose. So I was really happy about that. Um, the hardest part was getting to it, and then because it was way underneath the car and it's up under the exhaust on this, this vehicle, 
and uh, having to put the car up on jack stands. And then the plug is way up top inside the engine, so that was hard to get to as well. Uh, I'll show you what I did with that. I'll just pop the, the camera off here real quick. So um, for to get the actual cord and the plug, it had to come back here. Again, this is the Acura CL, and it was way back here. You basically take these, these plastic shrouds off. They pop right off with a screwdriver. And then I was able to reach down behind the spark plugs there and, uh, and get, the, uh, get the plug out. So to actually get the O2 sensor, you know, obviously I had to go underneath the car and put up on jack stands. So yeah, so again, um, the job took me about three hours. Uh, it should not have taken that long, but it was so difficult to get to. And I also did an oil change and did some inspections and stuff underneath while I was there. But had I had a rack to put up in the air, this whole job probably would have taken an hour. Uh, just the difficulty of getting to the, the plug and not being able to get it out right away. Uh, and I took breaks and stuff like that. But, um, you know, the reason that, the real reason I made this video is because just the weird things that were happening with the other codes. You know, um, I was getting things like the adapt leak and the running lean. And I checked all the obvious stuff like the gas cap, the seal around the gas cap. I did a, 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 a vacuum leak check to make sure that there was no vacuum leaks. And there's videos about how to do that. Um, you just use a carburetor cleaner and it's very easy. Uh, so there were no vacuum leaks, even though I was getting vacuum leak codes. Um, uh, you know, air filter, PCV valve, I had checked all that stuff out. And so it just was weird because the computer wasn't ever saying O2 sensor, yet that was what it was. And so um, just in case you, you run into this problem, uh, let's see what else here. I think I mentioned that uh, the scanner tool told me what, what bank it was at. And um, I'd even done a throttle body clean and cleaning out the uh, the air intake, and, and um, that made the car run a little better, but it didn't actually get rid of the problem. So um, this was what it was. It was just the O2 sensor, and uh, I saved myself uh, a lot of money because a lot of the shops around here, you go in and they tell you, oh, well, this code came up, but you also need this and you need that, or, oh, your spark plugs are now ruined because of you know, the car was running rich or whatever. Um, and, and so that sort of nonsense. And so, because um, I've had it happen to me on other, on other cars. And the shops around here, sometimes they, you know, they just need to get the bill higher, right? You know how mm -hmm. that is. So that's what it was for not to be a $60 repair. And um, it really wasn't that difficult. It was just the problem of just kind of getting to it and putting the time in. So uh, I hope this helps out somebody. And um, again, if you're getting the running lean codes and vacuum leaks, especially on these Acuras, uh, you may want to check the O2 sensor just in case. And this car is 200,000 miles on it, so it was time to do it anyway. So anyway, uh, I hope that's helpful to you guys, and uh, good luck with your next project. Thanks.